Hello, wonderful people. Welcome back to my channel, The Teacher's Best Friend. This is Mary Lou Areño. So for today's episode, I am going to discuss to you uh, an important topic on the process of application in case you are applying for a teacher as uh, under the J-1 visa on the direct hire process. So I am receiving a lot of inquiries on what's the process, how to apply. Although if you remember, I, I published a series of uh, how to apply for a job in the United States. And I have, I think, series one to nine, and there are additional uh, series for more job vacancies, as well as uh, I also issued some video on how to answer interview questions when you are applying for a teacher. So I would recommend that uh, visit my uh, YouTube channel, The Teacher's Best Friend, Mary Lou Areno, and you will find more information there and tips. But in today's episode, I am going to answer some questions and clarify the process of uh, direct application for teachers that are interested to work in the United States under a J-1 visa. So are you ready? Please prepare your pen and paper so you can also jot down notes. So let's begin from um, your desire or your motivation to apply in the United States. So as I mentioned in, in my YouTube, uh, there are job vacancies, a lot of job vacancies for teachers. And I even shared websites to you. I think I have three episodes on how to look for a job and where to look for a job, some links and websites. So please visit those, okay? So the first part of the process is of course, you need to prepare your credentials. And of course, your uh, the most important also is your cover letter. So you need to have those available. And after searching for a job that you like, in a place or a state that you would like to work, let's say if you want Arizona, California, New York, Florida. So once you find that job that you believe that uh, you are qualified, then you start uh, preparing your documentations. So you need to have a cover letter. State in your cover letter, why are you interested to apply for that position? So your interest to join the school or the company, state your education and experience, most especially your skills as a teacher and why are you the person fit for the job. You need to encourage the employer through your cover letter that you are the person that they are looking for by writing a cover letter that explain your eligibility for the position, your skills, credentials, and experience, okay? And your desire to join their school. So that is the number one part. And then the second is you need to write your resume. So by now, I hope you've been writing a lot of resumes. So make sure when you write a resume, it's comprehensive, okay? You can do a little research on how to write a resume to help you. So we don't have to go into the details. And another important thing when you are submitting an application to the school that you selected is you have to find out if the school or the district has its own application form. Because some district, they have a specific forms that you need to fill out. So whatever forms that they are requiring you to fill out, do those and submit them. Okay, and, and there are ways of sending application. Sometimes you can apply online. They have a portal where you apply online. So you can do that. Just follow their instructions, go to their website. And the second way is preparing all the cover letter, application, or forms that they need you to complete, and then scan and email them to their HR department or whoever is in charge of the recruitment. So you need to email that directly to them, follow the instruction and make sure you address the person properly. So you need to submit a lot of applications 
uh, the more the better of uh, chances of you getting, um, you know, interview. And if you just submit one or two, sometimes you need to wait for a while. And what if they did not call you? You need to submit as much application as you can because there are so many job vacancy. So that is the second step. First, you look for a job that you like, prepare your credentials and your cover letter and submit application. So now after submitting all the applications, they will call you. So make sure that in your resume or application, you have your contact information, most especially your email, because it's better to communicate through email since the time difference from the United States and uh, the Philippines or in any part of the world, okay? So make sure you have those contact information. So once they call you for an interview, then you need to uh, prepare yourself for an interview. And I have some tips also and video for that. Be ready for the interview, dress professionally, and as much as possible, be honest in answering your, uh, the questions because they can see your sincerity and honesty. So prepare yourself and uh, try to articulate uh, yourself very well, okay? So that is the second part. So once you pass the interview, the next one is the employer will do a background check or background reference because in your application or resume, you put their people that they can contact to check your uh, character reference or your background reference, okay? That's their procedure. So once you pass those, they get a good information from your references you pass the interview, then the next step is they will give you a job offer. So once you get the job offer, you are already like a, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, it's you're close to that, uh, you know, job that you are aiming for. So the job offer and the job offer states there that the district or the school is willing to hire you. And in the job offer, sometimes they state, uh, of course, your position and the salary that they're offering to you. And if you are uh, accepting that job offer, you need to sign that immediately and return it to the employer. So once they return it, once you return it, then they will confirm that you are interested and willing to accept the job. Okay, so you have the job offer. So the next step is processing of your J-1 or the DS-2019. Uh, and some employers, they don't have uh, like the direct, they are not eligible to process the DS-2019 themselves. But there are also district or state that they can do it on their own. Like if you remember, I know California and one of the charter school in Arizona, the basis, they are one of the J1 sponsors, so they can do it themselves. So what if they don't have an agency to process the J1? What you can do is uh, go back to my video that says uh, J1 visa sponsors, and I provided a link there showing the different agencies who can process your DS-2019. And you can even re recommend that to the employer or the district if they don't have one. But usually most district, they have already an agency and they communicate directly to that J1 agency to process your DS-2019. So what is an important thing to know about that? So there are two ways. If you already on the process of uh, getting your DS-2019 for the J1 visa, uh, sometimes the schools, they, shoulder the cost of the DS-2019 and or the service, what they call. And uh, it differs depending on the J-1 sponsor. There are sponsors that charge only $800 and some they do $1,200, some up to I think $1,500. So it varies depending on the agency. So you are lucky if the school or the district is willing to pay for that cost. And some agencies also, they require the school district to pay for it. And some, they just like charge the teacher. So you can negotiate on that. 
but if they don't really pay for it, then I would advise that you as a teacher prepared that amount because uh, that's part of the cost. It's up to 1500 for the DS 2019. Because if you turn that down, maybe that is, uh, they will feel bad and they will not, you know, proceed with hiring you. So it depends. You have to know how to negotiate whether the school will pay or you will pay. And it's just uh, lucky when a school district is the one paying for it, if they have funds. But you need to understand also that when they say we cannot pay, it's not because they don't like to pay. It's because that it's not part of their budget. School has budget as well, okay? So you know you need to know whether you will pay it or the school district will pay it. But nonetheless, prepare for that amount. It's about $1,500, okay? So once you receive your DS 2019, which the J1 sponsor uh, mailed to you, the next step is you need to go to the U.S. Embassy in the Philippines and schedule your interview, okay? You need to get interviewed in the embassy, bring your DS 2019, bring your passport, bring your other credentials because they might ask for it. If you have the job offer that is important, you need to bring that because it's telling that a district in the United States is willing to hire you. So that is something that you, you don't need to forget. The job offer, the DS 2019, your passport. So once you pass the interview at the U.S. Embassy, they will stamp your passport with a J-1 visa, okay? So once you have the visa, you inform your employer that you did pass and you have the visa. And uh, if they need you to come right away, your next step is to get your plane ticket. You know, you need to book yourself to fly to the United States. But you also need to check with the Commission on Filipino Overseas Office because they are the agency who takes care of all the J-1 uh, um, personnel or teachers that go abroad. And usually before they require for like a pre-departure orientation. So you need to check on that. If you need to do that, maybe due to COVID, they will just give you some information or you need to do it virtually. But check with them and register yourself with them that you are a living as J-1 so that they have a record also of you that as a J-1 um, teacher. So later on when you ask uh, like a paper or document for them for NOS, they know that you left and you registered with them, okay? So, wow, it's exciting. You are already preparing for your trip to the United States now that you have your ticket. And of course, uh, the next flight, I mean, the next step after your flight is to the, the arrival. And which I think I explained that in my previous video, like in your departure and arrival, what do you need to prepare? Of course, don't forget your documents. Don't forget your visa. Don't forget your credentials. You will need that for your certification in the US. Your transcripts. If you are married, bring your marriage certificate, your kid's birth certificate, because later on you are going to petition them to join you as a J2 or uh, a dependent, okay? So make sure you bring those documents and then settle yourself in the United States. Uh, make sure you get orientation from them and you can start working. Now, people are asking how to apply. Yeah, so that's a very easy process. You have to follow, check the website, look for job vacancies, prepare a good credential, resume, cover letter, so that they will be, uh, you know, they will attract, you will attract them and they can like, uh, you can convince them that you are the right person for the position. So that is as simple as that, or I can say it's easier said than done, but you need to step up and help yourself find those job vacancies and submit as much application. 
because if you are qualified, that's what the employers are looking for. Okay, and then don't feel bad if you don't get it the first time. Just keep trying. So let me repeat, what are the costs for your, uh, you know, departure or coming to the United States? So of course the passport, that is understandable. You need to take care of that already. You cannot fly without your passport. So the only costs that are really on the top that you need to prepare for in case it's the fee for uh, your DS-2019 or the service, which is about 1500 And then your plane ticket, I think now the tickets are quite low because of the pandemic. So that is about maybe the most is $1,000. So that is 2500 there. What else? So just your pocket money, that's it. You know, it direct hire, you will save a lot of money because I have experience uh, talking to a lot of teachers when they applied and they use a uh, third party agency, they spend a lot, you know, like for example, they spend $10,000 and they just loan those money. And when they loan the money, those interest, you know, sometimes the amount doubled. So you have to pay for those maybe in a year or two before you even, uh, you know, pay all of those uh, loan. So the best thing, the approach, if you are, you know, just patient enough is to do it on your own. Look for job vacancies, prepare your credentials, get interviewed and uh, wait, okay? So if uh, they are not calling you, keep looking, keep looking. There are so many. There are 50 states in the United States that you can look for job vacancies, okay? And in case uh, you missed some of the video about um, interview, that is very impor important as well. How to answer some interview questions like tell something about yourself, uh, and, and one thing you need to remember when you are in the interview is dress properly or dress appropriately, okay? Because uh, that creates a very good impression. And also check your internet connectivity so that the communication will not, you know, it will not be caught. So sometimes if they have a lot of schedule, they don't have patience. They might not proceed with your interview if they cannot contact you. They, they maybe have a lot of, uh, you know, scheduled interview. So you, you will miss that opportunity. So prepare, prepare and prepare and um, be patient. And then if you have questions, uh, I have an email that uh, people can send. It's called the, te the teacher's best friend at gmail.com. So send me if you have more questions and I am willing to answer, okay? So that is the process for applying direct in the United States. So thank you for watching. And uh, I hope uh, you are learning from my video and it's helpful for you. Give me some feedback and comment on the line below. And if you haven't done it yet, please click the subscribe button. You know, uh, I, this uh, YouTube channel is my advocacy. I would like to at least, you know, monetize in, in the channel so that I can help more people. I will be doing a lot of free professional development and uh, even sponsoring teachers or aspiring teachers to study if my channel can afford. So it is not for my profit, personal profit, but the reason why I started the YouTube channel of the teacher's best friend, it's because I would like to inspire uh, teachers to succeed. And at the same time, I would like uh, to support the professional development of educators and uh, help the high school students that are, you know, planning to be a teacher with their scholarship. So your support in watching my channel and clicking the subscribe button will go a long way to help others. So let us all pay forward by doing that. Okay. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. So don't forget, 
click the subscribe button and like. Thank you so much and see you. And to God be the glory. Bye for now.